This week we've seen gold and silver tumble by the largest amounts in around seven years. Today we explore some key lessons we can learn from this and why despite an enormously positive medium to long term outlook we may well see more volatility ahead. Welcome to the precious metals market. So let's dive on in. Now this channel provides global macro insights and champions the notion of sound money, so do consider subscribing. Now of course, crises go through stages. In February and March, we saw the market's realization that the onset of the crisis was upon us, giving rise to a dramatic liquidity crisis. This saw almost all asset classes face serious losses in the face of margin calls. Then we face the counterattack, the twin approach of colossal fiscal and monetary arrows targeted at arresting major stock market declines and providing support to large corporations. This stage, also referred to as the hope stage, has seen an enormous surge in equity prices. Yet equity prices, of course, bear no resemblance to the underlying fundamentals within economies. Instead, stocks have melted up on the back of the Fed's enormous liquidity program, as analysts like David Hunter said they would. Now, gold and silver's price response to the initial market crash back in March has been enormously positive. With the Fed creating over $3 trillion over the course of less than three months, we've seen precious metals hit uh, nine-year and all-time highs. But nothing goes up in a straight line. Pullbacks are an entirely healthy process, allowing buyers to reposition and sellers to take some profits. A process a little like catching one's breath and a prime opportunity for those anticipating such drawdowns. As we've considered previously, the gold bull market running to 2011 Pullbacks occurred May to June of 2006 at 23%, March through to October 2008 at a whopping 35%, February to April 2009 of 14%, November through to February 2010 of 15%, June to July of 2010 at 9%, and two further pullbacks in 2011. Just this year, in fact, we saw a pullback of 15% in March alone. So we need to expect these pullbacks they're inevitable in, even in strong bull markets however what we saw on Tuesday in the eyes of many metals experts was nothing less than a direct attack on gold and silver despite a day of relatively benign news the metals plummeted and gold saw its worst trading day in seven years Peter Spina of uh, Gold Seek wrote of how the silver futures volume traded over 330,000 contracts around 1.65 billion ounces of silver as he states that is nearly two times the annual size of the entire global silver market and when markets are flooded with paper sell orders it prompts stop loss sales among hedge funds and other speculators causing an acceleration of the downward momentum the financial media eagerly championed the story of gold and silver's collapse with a large proportion of investors focused upon momentum trades and taking their cues from the financial press and their financial advisors. They may also have rushed to correct their positions. Yet as of today, gold remains around 25% up for the year and silver up at around a whopping 45%. No doubt about it, the metals price performance in a deflationary environment thus far has been tremendous. But gold is a direct competitor to US treasuries and we saw 10-year treasury yields rise from 05 up to 0.65% on the 10-year yield. Hardly a big enough move to actually prompt such a flight out of gold for such a dismal yield. However, the Treasury must maintain demand for its paper and Wall Street must maintain demand for its derivative products. The traditional 60-40 investment profile fits the bill here. Precious metals remain enemy number one to the Treasury, Federal Reserve and Wall Street cabal but the money supply continues to grow at an annual rate of around 20%. 
while an ever greater supply of treasury bills is being issued to finance soaring national debt. These are key fundamentals that remain enormously price supportive to gold and silver. So will we see future pullbacks? Absolutely, and these are often entirely healthy. But what we can certainly take away from the recent market action is that when there is a parabolic move in prices well above the 121 day exponential moving average, as we can see here, the chances of a pullback grow. We had previously seen this in March. In addition, on the gold silver ratio, this shaded area is historically one of increased volatility, as we can see historically on this. 20 year ratio. This line represents corresponding resistance to any further move upward in the gold silver ratio. Now, of course, there are a variety of macro headwinds out there as well, which include uh, the following. First, there's the concern of rising insolvencies, which could see an even greater disconnect between market fundamentals and the price. A wave of large scale bankruptcies could give rise to increased selling and cause markets to fall substantially in a significant debt deflation. The dramatic rise in mortgage delinquencies suggests real problems which feed into our second point. That is that there's the growing risk of a banking crisis perhaps originating in Europe. Third, there remains further trade war concerns which have the potential to impact stocks and drag precious metals down with them. Fourth, the bigger the continued rise in gold and silver prices, the larger the potential for a big pullback is likely to become as profits are taken and margin calls on other asset classes for sales. Fifth, the Fed's recent tapering of their balance sheet has helped to actually arrest some stock market appreciation. Yet the Fed and other central banks have a tendency to generate crises by sudden tightening. Could they go too far? Once again, it's a possibility. After all, the market has not regained such highs based on market fundamentals, but simply increased liquidity to inflate the market. The correlation is clear as we can see here. Finally, there remains the issue of those banks with significant short positions who would desperately love to see a big drawdown in prices of gold and silver to enable them to avert such large losses that they're exposed to. As we've discussed previously, a lot here will depend upon the actions of the most corrupt of banks, JP Morgan. Yet I believe that any pullback is likely to be short lived. The US election in early November, together with widespread media reporting, uh, seem to point to the fact that we are likely to see ever greater stimulus being introduced. In addition, further fiscal extravagance is likely to lead to yield curve control by the Fed as the fiscal deficit grows ever wider and national debt continues to soar, Treasury holders may sell. Ordinarily, this would give rise to an increase in borrowing costs on treasuries, yet higher borrowing costs would lead to further questions regarding the solvency of the US economy. Thus, the Fed is likely to need to intervene to buy bonds and cap borrowing costs across the range of bond maturities. As soon as you start talking about deficits, debt and yield curve control, you start looking at an enormously positive impetus for gold and silver prices. Furthermore, any collapse in equities will give rise to vast monetary expansion by central banks and most analysts anticipate the Fed's balance sheet to soar into double figures in such a scenario. This will help pump stocks back up into line and the threat of increased inflation could reinforce equity appreciation as well. And so will the real economy benefit in such a scenario? Well, the real benefit of uh, such liquidity as we've seen recently is to those closest to the digital printing press. Yet a year from now, metals prices will be higher and fiat currencies commensurate values will be lower. Meanwhile, miners will enjoy much higher average revenue at no additional marginal cost. Before long, these much improved metal prices will be truly reflected in the mining stock sector as well. And can we guarantee cheaper future prices? Well, of course, nothing is guaranteed, but a clear lesson this week is to pay attention to trends and delay purchases in the face 
case of big parabolic moves. A steadier building profile that we can see highlighted in this graph is favourable for gold bulls. Generally trading above 1950 and key resistance at around 1875. This trend, if held, could see a price of $2,300 before the end of the year. Now, here's our summary for today. Do let me know what you think in terms of your expectations for the economic headwinds that uh, the global economy faces and the likely repercussions on metals prices here. Look forward to hearing from you below. Thanks so much for watching. Do check out these other videos and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.